Well, it is episode six of the Boxing Review Show on Boxing Social. Still smashing records all over the place, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, it's only grown as well. And this is Anthony Million Dollar Crawler, of course, the former WBA lightweight champion of the world. Again, we've had to get that in, so that's part of the package. Anthony has to have his ego stroked every single week, isn't this right, Ant? That's true, yep, yeah, that's true. It's just, yeah. Every single week. As ever, as the name of the title will give you a clue. We're going to review the action from the weekend, both here in the UK and stateside as well. And there was some action in, in Dublin. I know you were very impressed with Anthony as well, so we might touch yep. upon that. Uh, but firstly, as we like to start these things, Ant, um, how's your week been? What have you been doing? Anything interesting? This week, um, obviously, early on, family christening yesterday. Always good to get the family. Yep. Um, obviously, watch the boxing weekend. It's a pretty mm -hmm. chilled weekend, to be honest. And then... What do you have? Obviously, our next guest, he's down for the week. Yep. Always uh, good to catch up with him. One of the very best people I've met in boxing. I mean that, I'm not just saying it because he's sat over there. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, no good, sort of busy week coming up. And we've got plenty of chats because the, the guest today, we're very honoured to have Willie Limond down, down south, as you, he might say. But of course, you two go back a long way. You, you've had, you've had your, your moment in the, the ring, but also yeah, outside of the ring as well. well yeah, before yeah, that, and yeah. then obviously. Yeah. After that, um, and then Willie, he's got a, a big fight coming up in September as well. Yeah. And, but, and um, a couple of good boxing lads with him as well. Just, yeah, yeah. just a bit, um, a great boxing family and his, yeah. uh, his two very talented sons. Well, we are going to get into Willie in just a bit, but of course we're going to look at the action first and foremost. So if we start on uh, UK soil, I think, first, yeah. and, and the big card was in the North East, Josh Kelly, um, yeah. the Sunderland man, of course, boxing at the arena there in Newcastle against Gabriel Corzo. I mean... He's a massive talent, isn't he? And I think yeah. we saw the real Josh Kelly in the Troy Williamson derby, if you like. It, it, it had, obviously, that, that blow with David Evanesian. But yeah. what do you make of Josh's progress uh, and, and over the weekend as well? Do you know what? Listen, that weekend I thought, one, it looked very good. And the criticism you get with Josh Kelly, mm. there's a lot of showboating that go on. And I think people say, well, listen, if you're going to box like that, we need to see the knockout. Mm. You know, we can't watch... 36 minutes of it, if you, when I'm saying that, sort of the casual, the purist, listen, I love watching Josh Keller. He was, I can't say he was a level above Corso, he was a good few levels above Corso, so for that opponent, we wanted to see get him out of there, but listen, he's a super talent, but now, I think, like I say, since Avenition has come back, he had a fantastic one against Troy Williamson, and I always think, like, Josh will raise his game to the, le to the level of opposition that's in front of him, mm. and obviously he was talking about world titles, but I think next time out, You'd want to see Josh in with a top 10 contender, and I think he's more than ready for that um, to gauge where he's at. But no, he's, he's got skills for days. And everyone will say, Josh, oh, is he cocky? Do you want to meet him? He's a really timid lad, but he's just, mm. just a lovely lad. There's no cocky or arrogance about him whatsoever. But uh, no, I'm, um, I am a fan of uh, PBK. So when you see what he's done over the weekend then, and uh, again, you want to see more knockouts and this kind of thing, but what, yeah. where would you want to see him go next then? It's, like I said, I'd like to see him in the top 10. Top 10 challenger, I'm not sure. But where any names that, are, that spring to mind? Well, listen, you look at in, on, the, on the domestic scene now, I know there's, um, the, there's talk of JJ Metcalf, Sam Eggington. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're the kind of fights where you, you'd want to see Josh in. I'm sure Josh would want them as well, but I think, you know, I know that's a fight that could possibly be made there. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's got to be, since some people might even say above that again in the top 10, and obviously there's, there's a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, there's huge hopes. I always remember Adam Booth telling me the hopes he had for Josh Kelly. He was one of the very best he's ever trained. And Adam Booth, one of the great coaches of here in the last mm -hmm. 10 years, you, well, more, <laughs> you're, um, you listen to what he says. So now it's going to be interesting. But um, yeah, I think next time out, he's got to be a fight where there's, there's a real threat to him. And I think that's when we'll probably see the best of Josh Kelly as well. Another fight on the card that you would have been very interested in because uh, not so long ago, you were kind of preparing Alex Del Mangani yeah, was, to fight yeah. Liam Dillon. That fight didn't happen. Um, now, obviously, Liam's gone down a different route and, and he obviously took on Kesh Ashfak and, yeah. um, and he's a real well, talent, Kesh, as well. And, and Liam came through. So, I mean, what do you make of that performance? He did. I, I thought it was a very spirited, um, gutsy performance and a deserved winner. I think Kesh mm. has got lovely skills, but someone on Twitter put it, I think it's shown the difference really between the amateur and pro game at times. You know what, man, I think what else have we read this from? But he was bang on. Mm. Kez has got lovely skills and an Olympian and stuff. And Liam Dillon, like in, in the amateurs, 
this isn't being disrespectful. If anything, it's a compliment. You wouldn't you wouldn't have put Liam Dillon in the same ring as Kez. Mm. Uh, but in there, he just he just out us all Kez. And listen, they want load in it, but he's the right winner, and he just sort of he just wanted it that bit more, didn't he? Wanted that, bit. and at the time, Jerry might not have been pretty, but he was just a, just a workhorse. And you know what? Fair play to him. Obviously, I was studying him for a fighter. I was training, and so he's waiting a long time for his slot. You know that didn't happen. It got put back, and. Uh, no, listen, he finally got his chance and he's made sure he took it and, and he fought like that as well. So, listen, well done to Liam Dillon and the team. Mm. Now, plenty of other action, of course, on that undercard and good wins. Chloe Watson, she's yeah. a real talent. Just trains yeah. down the road from where we are here at Fox ABC, your gym, but she trains under the guidance of Blaine Eunice yeah. and Ricky Hanna in, in, in Hyde. Yeah. Uh, from Birkenhead. Yes. And, and, and again, another real talent. Is she, I know next time I know she fights for the European mm. title, the fighter. I expect her to win, but no, I think there's a great chance we see Chloe Watson become world champion. I've, I've been a fan of Chloe Watson for a good while. Great balance. I love mm. the way she switches it up from head to body. And uh, no, she's entertaining to watch, speaks well. She ticks a lot of boxes and uh, look forward to seeing her in the European title fight next time out. And another win for Troy Williamson. Troy, good to yeah. see Troy, yeah. Back out. And um, he always has huge support down there. And, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what weight he's going to fight. I know this mm. one, I think, was that middle. He's such a big light middle. And I don't know, I've said it for a bit, but I think, you know, he feels he can make it. Well, I, I think he is a middleweight. I believe he's a middleweight. And I think going forward, that's where you'd like to see Troy. You know, the size of it. He looks, he looks fantastic at middleweight. So you think to chop another six pound off could be tough and take some out of the performance. But yeah, no, because um, see Troy back. Well, just before we cross stateside, there was a, a fight this weekend just. A little stroll up the road, actually, from here, wasn't it? Alden Leisure Centre. There was, Center. there was, just There's a few mile away of that. Lots of good local talent on the bill. You had a fighter yeah. on as well. I know he's from Sheffield, Levi Kinsiona, but he trains with you yeah. here. He got the job done. He did. Some other good talented good. fighters, are, you know, the likes of Josh Holmes, Billy Dennis as Josh well. Holmes, there was Jake a bit of, Dodd bit of, made his professional yeah. debut. Big knockout. Um, Levi, I was really happy with first fight together. You know, he listened really well, boxed well. Billy Dennis, mm. Perry Arthur, that was, that was the bill topper. It, yeah. You know, bit of a crazy ending. But, uh, so Perry was disqualified, wasn't he? Perry was yeah. disqualified. Disqualified. There was a bit of afters. Do you know, after it? But yeah, no, it's, um, you know, that kind of thing in a young fighter's career where you're going to get those frustrating nights and stuff like that. And I think you've got to take them and learn from them. But a um, great fight. Yeah, there's, there's a great fight on the undercard, actually. Um, between... Or another Joel's one lad, um, Rizard, um Levitsky. Levitsky. Yeah. And um, Bermuda, anyone knows who knows Bermuda, he's mm. listening, he fights on the road, but he always brings it. And that was a draw, that was a fantastic fight. You know, one of those little small, or cl classic, might be, I don't know if I'm going too bad, but it was a really, some really entertaining fight. Um, you have to be missing that. There's definitely a few other, you know, talented lads on there. Josh Holmes, Josh, I think Josh, I touched on yeah, before. Josh, very yeah. good. And um, yeah, no, so it was, it was a good little show. Well, of course, stateside, one of your favourites was in action as well. Alicia yes. Bumgarner uh, in against Leonardo too, the only girl to beat her. So she was on a yeah. revenge mission, which she accomplished. And so, she got that. Yeah. And um, listen, Leonardo too had success in, in there, but all in all, I just thought Alicia Bumgarner, she was just too polished for her. She probably mm. held her feet a little bit more than we've seen recently. You know, going up in weight, she looks, she looks fantastic. She always does, to be fair. You yeah. know? She... Um, you know, was she on your undercard as well? Am I right in thinking when Katie boxed in Manchester? She was, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. they, that, that, you were fighting... I think it was the last fight. We were the last fight, so yeah. It was, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. that's when it was. So she fought then. But no, she was very spirited. And obviously she, she had the yeah. win last time and she fought like she'd get the win again. But Baumgarten was just a little bit too cute. A shot selection was very good. I loved yeah. the way she dug, dug the shots into the body. And um, yeah, she, she wants all the smoke because they say, I think... I'm going to call Katie's name out, didn't she? At lightweight, but mm. she wants another world title. Yeah, it was a great showing, uh, another great showing. Um, it was always interesting to see how he was going to go on his professional debut, an absolute standout oh, amateur, and Andy yeah. Cruz against uh, Juan Carlos Burgos. But Tough man. It went the distance, but you, you'd kind of half expect that, really, from, from Cruz in a way, wouldn't you? And, and yeah, and from Burgos as yeah, well, like yeah. we've seen that with um, Keyshawn Davis. But yeah, no, Cruz, I think there's glimpses of. Just what a special talent he yeah. is. I thought, listen, I thought it was a very good debut, debuting over 10 rounds, but I think they're going to move. And listen, he's, he's that good to move him fast. Listen, not many people make the debuts over no. 10 rounds. But um, no, you like say, he's a, the angles he brought in, again, so well balanced, the shot selection. I, it was a joy to watch. In a good gym as well, Boots Ennis and, and all the rest Boots of it Ennis, as well. Boots Ennis, one so of my very favourite yeah. fighters. Yeah, he's with his father, coached by him. 
And there was another interesting fight because of what's coming up and where we were last week when we were at the Joshua White press conference in London because their last foe, yeah, both Joshua and White, was yeah. Jermaine Franklin. And he was out again against a very tough Mexican, Munoz. He was tough. Yeah. There, was, there was an uppercut in that fight and he nearly knocked me off my seat watching it. it was, uh, <laughs> but no, Franklin's back to winning ways. And Frank, listen, Franklin's an handful as he's proven for absolutely anyone in the division. Yeah. Do you know, you look, obviously, he had the close fight with Dillian, but, you know, Joshua, uh, Fury Yusek, take him away. And then he's, he's a tough night for so many of that division. Um, so no good to see him back to winning ways really because he's gone on the road but yeah uh, but shout out to Munoz very tough man yeah one of Dimitri Salitas fighters isn't he as well obviously he, Clarice is his most well known yeah Dimitri who Dimitri, boxed yeah. Amir Khan who's got something in common again with our main guest yes. today which we're going to get to but, but yeah he's course, not that bad stable as Dimitri no very very good uh, the other bit of action that seems to have had a lot of people talking as you were talking and the fighters in the gym here yeah. a little bit earlier on it did get mentioned for good and bad reasons, I don't know where you stand on this, Ant, so I'll ask you. The yeah. Kingpin show and, and the, yeah. what's the name again? Daniel Helmsler. Yeah. Daniel Helmsler. So uh, a lot of criticism, had Eddie Hearns had his say on that, uh, about yeah, her, I mean, basically she, she had lifted the top at the end of the yeah, show, she got you, a bit carried away. But. You, do you know what, you can't like, when in that arena not long back, when you're seeing the fight with Katie Taylor, Chantel mm. Cameron, Joe, Almost, you can't. You feel protective, it's like what Katie Taylor's done yeah. for women's boxing for that. And listen, I know it's not professional boxing, or it's not licensed by border control. But you know, just at the end of the fight, to basically get your rack out, you can't do it, mate. You absolutely can't do it. It's um, and it's not. There's there's girls who are who are looking up, you know, to that kind of people, and it's. It's just wrong to in, know. In all seriousness, it's so that demographic ways. as well that'll be watching that. A lot of girls at yeah, that age, you know what I mean? Just that, thinking, yeah. it's like, yeah. and it, my thing is, would have she done that mm. if she was fighting on a small show? So I'm like, no, she absolutely won't, but she knew there's a lot of eyes on her. And um, yeah, I just I didn't agree with it. As horrified as you are, Anthony, you just have to get over that. But, yeah, uh, anyway. I'll live with it, but yeah. yeah not, so, yeah. Uh, there we have it. That's kind of part one done then, because we want to get in the main man. We want to get in our, our special guest. So uh, that's the review bit done for now, but we're going to get into it now with, uh, with the one and only Willie Lemond. Well, thanks very much indeed for joining us, Willie. I know you're down here doing a bit of training down down south with Anthony and everything else, and and you've got a a fight coming up that we know about. That's yep. uh, he's had a good bit of press. And yourself, Ricky Burns, Aye. two two of the top names out of Scottish boxing. You know, for the, for the last couple of decades, I think it's fair to say. I don't know. I'm not trying to age you too much no, here. Do, do you're right. I mean? But you finally meet, and it's. Um, Next, next, well, no, sorry, I was going to say next month. No, it's Seven September weeks. Aye, yeah. for, September the 1st. But aye, it's a, it's a pleasure to be down. Auntie's gym at Fox ABC. We come down for quite, quite regular visits mm. here. So it's, aye, it's like a home for home kind of thing. But aye, this is good just to kind of get us a break for, for Glasgow. But down here, training hard. But yeah, enjoy myself. You two, right, we mentioned, touched upon it before. Um, we'll get yeah. to you and Burns in a bit. Uh, but obviously, to set the scene in terms of yourself and Anthony. Uh, we know about the fight for the British title, and that was back in 2011. Yeah, it was yeah. a long time but, ago, but 12 you, years ago. You were pals before that. Yeah. So how did that all come um, about? Pat, so before it, well, I obviously I'd met Willie before, but I was coming down sparring with Ricky. Ricky. And with Ricky. Um, Willie was like, listen, so Willie picked me up from the state, and I stopped at Willie's house. I remember at the time, as young lads, there was a lot, well, obviously, there was babies 11 years ago. Did these two fine specimens over there now, yeah. Jake and Drew, they're on their own path now, yeah. Yeah, they're well and truly on their own path. So, yeah, it, it's mad sort of the way boxing works. Like I said, there, you know, it's, uh, I guess, a bit cringy, don't you? But, like, Willie's one of the very best people I've ever met in boxing. And I think in all jobs, you meet good people, you yeah. meet bad people, whatever. But, yeah, mm. no, I mean that. And it's, uh, no, it's gone further, that, like, obviously, boxing. And then I'd always, Support Willie, and then I even ended up. I done the corner for um, Jake, didn't I? Jake's first fight. Jake's first fight. And he's done the corner for my last fight. Same week. night, father and son. Yeah. I was saying that. Do you know what, father and son? How many times has that happened with father and son? It's happened on once. Day? I think the boy it was it Lee Haskins. I think mm. he done it. I think he done it with. I know that. I'm sure he done it with his boy. 
uh, for Bristol. I think you're yes. going for Bristol. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So I, think I was the first time in, in England, and Jake and myself was yeah. the first time in Scotland that's happened. So it was, but I, that was, yeah. that was a, it was a strange night. It was, <laughs> it was. It's that night, and uh, it must have been a pretty strange night when you finally met for the title as well. Because, I mean, you, know, you know, I mean, I know that it happens all the time in boxing when pals have to just kind of forget course, about that. There was never any needle yeah, between yeah, me and yeah, Willie, yeah. like, it was just, yeah, that was it. It was just, I remember, the, if anything, it's probably more, I remember being at the press conference and, like, <laughs> Willie's see. mates, he was there. It was like, like I said, I'd, I'd become friendly with them yeah, from yeah. when, when I'd spent sort of my time down there on uh, the old Gafalnik estate. Yeah, Gafalnik, I know. Yeah. What a place. <laughs> and uh, oh, it was brilliant. I loved it. Everybody's no, loved door it. was open. People Everyone's just. Door, I couldn't get my head around. Everyone's door was open. People just walking kids. out your house. You'd walk in their house. Well, that's yeah. like it was, wasn't it? We went, I remember when we uh, we come up again, didn't we, Spy? And when Cal Smith. Cal Smith. Cal Smith. Cal Smith. Cal so we're I in mean, a few hours since Jim, aren't we? Really? Was this, this was before you won the Commonwealth title, wasn't it? I was it? Training, fighting for, I was going to fight Eddie Doyle for the Commonwealth. Yeah. And you and Callum came up and, and I'll let you tell the story. And, um, at the time, anyone who knows, like, sort of, Callum had got these new pair of winning gloves and he was, uh, he was, you know, made up with him, like, at the time. And Callum, this was before he earned his wages, what he had now. So he just mm. got this brand new pair of winning, put them on for the very first time. And Peter Harrison, Everyone says what a great coach Peter Peter's is, don't brilliant. they? Peter's brilliant. Anyway, Peter's taped his gloves and he's got this like... Gas tape, it's like gas, oh, gaffer tape and stuff. Right, right, yeah. Proper. And before Welds Callum to the gloves. Could, he's got Callum's gloves there. Before Callum could go, he's quiet Callum, isn't he? He's got, mm. No, I've got my own tape. <laughs> <laughs> hey, taped him, taped him up to here. Like, have you ever seen like one of Scott's fights? He's got, you won't get away with it now, would you? Nothing there, nothing there, right back. Like, yeah. Right there, yeah, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, Callum knew then what was coming at the end of it. <laughs> 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 Mate, just blue leather, just on oh, a brand new pair of winning those, just red right, the, the, the leather was stuck to the, the gaffer tape, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and Peter just done it, uh, and then walked away. Callum. Was just, Callum was just there, like, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like I say, back then, there was, a, there was a few hundred quid for a pair of winning months. Yeah. They're not cheap gloves. I, I remember looking at you and seeing Callum's face just like... Oh, he was that broke. He was that broke. <laughs> I went, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Lucky enough, he's done all right since, but, oh, yeah, it was yeah, an you can, you can afford a new pair now, can't you? Yeah, I think, I think so. Right. But... As well as you two, obviously, going back a long way, I mean, again, a lot of people will say, I mean, you won titles, what, seven titles or so, I think. Seven titles, you, you three different bits, aye? Yeah. So, I mean, an incredible career. You got the WBU, didn't you? you? You boxed some of the top names, Eric Morales, we'll, we'll get to in a second. But I think, as well as him and, and one or two of the other fights, Alex Arthur and everything, but the Amir Khan one was very high profile, wasn't it? Yeah. Very, very, back in 2007, that, and, and because you gave him all sorts of trouble. It was, see, when I look back at my career, I've mixed in great company, obviously, yeah. with, with Annie and Alex Arthur, Amir Khan and uh, Morales and even Tyron Ross yeah. was, was, a, was a good fit. Like, Tyron yeah. was, was very good. Yeah. So it was all like, oh, be off the best kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's the, probably I was just kind of that away. But the the Army can fit there. It was oh, what a kind of it was a high profile fight yeah. and it was at the O2 Arena. But it was it was his kind of coming out fight, I suppose. Mm. But it was listen, it, one of those things, isn't it? There's a controversy with the count. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you, do you kind of look back at that now and just think, well, do you know what? It was, at the time, it's hard to take, but it's one of. Do you know something? I never bought it. When I harmed it, I didn't do it. Re- well, obviously, on the night, I remember being there and looking across and going, He's not getting up. So I thought, <laughs> Stay down, stay down. And I thought the referee was saying, But it was actually, it was a weird kind of. And I was going, It was like in my head, the fight was stopped, and all of a sudden, I had to get back. And I believe I couldn't get back on track, kind of thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, in yeah. my head, I was going, He's not yeah. making this, his fight stopped. This, I thought the referee was stopping it. And then. I had to continue and fair play to Amir, he'd done what I could have done, he, he got the, the decision, do you know what I mean? So mm, That's what made him so exciting, because he was so vulnerable as well, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. You know, he was so fast and all the rest of it. Michael Gomez hurt it, in the, he hurt yeah. the nail on the head once, he says, a world-class fighter with world-class flaws. Yeah. I remember Michael Gomez saying that after he yeah. fought him, and I went, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. A, that's a good, that was a good statement he made. I knew Amir since the age of 12, so I knew mm. how unbelievable he could be, but it's probably, I always say it, me. I don't use it with it. The amount of disrespect he gets is unbelievable. You know, some mm. of the wins. Look at the guys like, he's fought. Oh, I look at yeah, the guys. Everybody. Yeah. He's fought but, everybody. Canelo, Madonna. He's fought them all. Yeah, and, and like you say, he's, he's got some fantastic wins. And what's he well. doing in a ring with Canelo? Let's face it's, it. Yeah. Like, you know, know, the play. Play. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Doing well, wasn't yeah. he? Like, I know yeah. you always thought the end was coming, but 
He was having success. Wow. Amazed speed was always yeah. frightening, wasn't it? He hooked me for it. Fury. I remember hooking me yeah. a left hook and I went, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> just, so hot me there. Yeah, the long, long arms. Nah, you, boom, it was left up. I cut it up and I went, yeah, I that comfy. I, yeah. I, I, was, I was a little bit gutted when him and Kel was fighting at the end. And I know they'd always wanted it, but that was a shell of a mate. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Listen, Kel, Kel might have always had his number. Do you know what I mean? Kel's a special talent. But when he was, he, he was watching it there, and listen, he was as brave as always, but it was pretty apparent early on with I, the mate, it wasn't it? After like yeah. a minute or so, when it's like, this isn't the lad that's, do you know, yeah. won world titles at different he, he ways. He said a lot of hard fights. He said a lot of, there was a few heavy knockouts. Yeah. I, believe that, I believe that has an impact on you. Yeah. The more you train, the more, more times you need to make weight, I believe it can Catches take up. it. Yeah. I, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And tell us then about the, the Morales situation, because that, that, that was a, obviously another massive fight. That, that was, a, that was actually, it was strange how that came about. So I just put in there. It was strange how it came out. He was doing a movie. He was doing a film. Down in Wales, he was what he was acting as one of the Mexican fighters, and the guy, the Mexican fighter he was playing, fought a boy for Wales. Was it was it Johnny Owen? Uh, 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 something uh, like uh, Matchstick uh, Man. Uh, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I, I, I just got told this kind of story. There was no names, but he says the guy had a style like mine, and then Mirage went, "Well, oh, I want to fight him," <laughs> and that was how that fight came about. And the weird thing is, I had a bro I had broke broke my hand and broke my wrist, and I got a phone call. For my manager at the time, Alec Morrison, and he says, Do I fight Eric Morales? And I'm sitting there stuck on, right? I, said, I had this put on two days previous, yeah. and I went, I thought he was kidding me on. And he says, I thought, it was, I thought it was a joke. And he went, No, seriously, do I fight Morales? I went, Aye. He says, Come down and we'll sign the contract. I was like, My brother Raymond was sitting there, and he went, You've, yeah. you've got a fucking broken arm, broken <laughs> hand. I cut the stucky off with a bread knife, I'm joking my wrist, went, I'll bump, I couldn't even. I, I gas taped up, I, I, I don't know I could just so I could sign this contract and we had 12 weeks to the fight wow. and I remember Peter Harrison's like, how are you not throwing, how are you not throwing right hands? And I'm going, I'm just out of work on my left just to, but I couldn't have, I couldn't have, for the first three weeks I couldn't have throw yeah. a, a proper punch because my wrist and my hand was broke but that was, that was the story for that but that was, that was, oh, that was amazing, it was, I think it was 56,000 at the fight, it was in wow. a blue arena Mm. And the Mexican people are brilliant, so I've always kept in touch with Mirage after it was over last year. So again, it was a, it was a good contact. I mean, it was a, obviously the fight didn't go my way, but it was a good fight up until that point. You were saying with it, I remember. And listen, with really sort of being humble, there, like, you started very, very well, right. didn't you? Off very well. And in the end, I'm not listen. I'm not never disrespect Morales, but altitude definitely played a big part. And remember you saying to me. I remember Willie going to me. Well, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble. You was having something to eat, weren't you? And you, you, was, you was thinking, I was out of breath eating my dinner, do you know what I mean? Peter Harrison, and there was a reporter guy sitting next to Peter, and that's yeah. when the guy's nose just started bleeding. Oh. And Peter Harrison, the sweat was out, and I'm, and I'm eating my dinner, I'm going, I had, I had a break. <laughs> I was like, I need, free, that's, 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 I need a minute break in between, because you actually couldn't breathe. The first day I got there, I'm going, oh, and then we started getting a bit used to it, but I knew I was in trouble. After round four, I'm going, I just, my legs felt like lead, yes, I couldn't yeah. lift my legs, I'm going, I said, I mean, I'm going to try and do what I can do here, but I just looked there, I seen him smiling, I went, ah, he knows, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was, you, you've done some kind of work with them in, since, uh, training-wise, and you, like, right. obviously, so you, you, you're not finished yet, you've got a fight coming up, obviously, but you've been coaching for a good while now, haven't you? And in fact, we, we, had, we mentioned you a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Because we were trying to work out who had more badges in boxing. Yes, we were talking we, this. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking this, actually. And you corrected me, didn't you, Will? So I promoted, I managed, I trained, I had my... my boss. You said he, he hadn't managed. managed. Yeah, I was actually, yeah. the yeah. promotion side of things, I struggled with that. That was, you see all the paperwork and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got it wrong, yeah, so I, I was unsure. I didn't think you'd managed, but I, you had my, managed. I, I had my manager, I had the promoters and the manager's licence. We had a good stable with 10 good fighters. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. guys like Craig McIntyre, who was just yeah. got Keelan yeah. Smith, yeah. Louis yeah. Fritzen was on the yeah. books. But yes. we, we had a right good stable, 10 yeah. top class fighters. Yeah. And we just kept losing money in the shows and yeah. we had to sell houses and you know, most a lot basically, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was how, that's what I'm fighting again. <laughs> so, so it's you and Dave Allen that have got the most badges, we believe, isn't it? You know, as an active fighter yeah. as well. Yeah, I think so, Dave. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't have no badge anymore. Yeah. I've just no, got, no, I've no, just, yeah. Yeah. I've just got a fighting yeah. badge now. Yeah. But in terms of, yeah, you would, you would have held like every licence like, pretty you, much. You would but, do yeah. anything before promoting again. That's why I always say, like, the shows that weekend, mm. you remember your Steve Woods, and, and there's plenty of others up and down the country. Yeah. I'm just talking local and stuff, but the 
people don't realise, do they, the, the, the hassle of promoting it. Mm. Very, very few people make money. It's yeah. like, and then that's why, and it, it's hard, but fighters have got to sell the tickets. They've got I, to cover their opponent. They've got to put the bit in the pot before yeah. they can take any wage it's, away themselves. And that, it's, it's horrible. Awful. That's just the business and that's the business. Yeah. So, so it's like, some might, okay, some promoters might have a lot more money than others, but people, they can't just, I think this is for me, I always say this, mm -hmm. For amateurs that are turning over, or whether they've had an amateur background or not, you've got to realise there's, there's got you've got to sell enough tickets. Unless you're going to go on the road in the mm. away corner, you've got to sell enough tickets to cover your opponent and put your butt in, yeah. and put your part in the show. You know, your bit in the mm. pot for the show. Before otherwise, if you're not understanding that, do not turn professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I was I was done with tickets, and I was yeah. so for this fight come up. I've done fifth, nearly, I think it's forty one. I think I've. Nearly fifty thousand pound worth of tickets that I've done for my for my yeah. front door. Mm. Now I've had to order my tickets. So yeah, yeah. I know I was going on the shows. It wasn't because I was a special very good. It was because I sold tickets. That helped. That no, was, it helps massively, it, doesn't it? And with that, opportunities course, come, it, doesn't it? And it was good because when I stayed in Gafarmock, well, they, they would come and support you in their yeah. droves. So mm. it's, it's yeah. not a rich area. It's quite. There's people. They're, they're hard working people. There's some people. Yeah. Don't walk, and they're all saving their pennies to come and watch you yeah. fight, and it was it was quite it was humbling. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, and to this day, they're still doing it. They yeah. did for Jake as well, and not so much through. He's still amateur. He's, he's <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do it. No, so it's, they did it for the two boys as well, and that, that, it's, it's a brilliant kind of community. Do you mm. know what I mean? And the boxing kind of held it together. But yeah. she says I've no box for years, so I think I think we'll just want to see <laughs> see what we've got left. Which. Brings us on to this Ricky Burns yeah. fight. Now, Ricky's 40, you're 44 now. Mm. You're both fit fellas though, I mean, and yeah. Ricky's famed for his, his yes. ridiculous fitness levels yeah. and you're a fit man, been watching your train today. You've, you've, you've still got plenty going on. So what are we going to see? What are we going to see on the night? Oh, that's, I, I'm going, I'm, yeah, actually, I'm going to be honest, it actually annoyed me at the press conference. Very, I felt it was a bit disrespectful, dismissive. So that's got my back up and, I, and I'm, I really like that Joe, I really like that. I want to put a good performance in for the fans mm. and I'm going to walk away with it less than a win for this fight. He's, he has, I'm saying he's got under my skin, but it annoyed me. I'm, I'm, try, I'm talking, I'm saying he's this, he's that, and he was always talking to me about this fight. And five years ago, when you talked to me about the fights with me when I was at my peak, he wouldn't fight me. He wouldn't, he, mm. I'm moving down him, mate. Then he moved back up, mate, to fight Rocco. Who wouldn't they fight us? So I'm going, <coughs> just go to the stage where I went, you know what? And the comments he made, they kind of annoyed me a wee bit. So we'll see, we'll see in the 1st of September. Mm. You're, you're perfectly placed for this as well, aren't you? You've, got, you've obviously been in with Ricky oh, not, yeah. not so long ago. It's, I was a what, what yeah. was it? It's, it's 2017. Like six years yeah, ago. all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll be honest. Ricky gave Anthony a better fight than I gave Anthony. It was, it was, it was a oh, Anthony won the fight with Ricky. He dominated the fight with me. Yeah. I, I know what I mean, but they mean Ricky. But it'll be a different, different kind of style. Styles make fights. You know I mean? Styles make fights. Yeah. yeah. And apart from this fight, then with the lads and their, and their careers and your coaching, I mean, how is everything? Ah, all right. As I say, this was to, right, to be fair, it was a bit of a joke kind of thing with, with me and Ricky. Like he was talking about he's going to fight somebody for for, for his last fight. I went, "Who fighting? Don't know. I said, "Why don't you fight me?" So I suppose I took away in it, and I he was right with that. But it just just the way he kind of says it. But I'm going to be a day fight somebody nobody knows. I said, so you all fight me, at least they still sell tickets. It's a big interest in the Aye, yeah. 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 I'll sell my tickets to them. I think that was how they used to get me on these shows, so, so what? It was, because I, I yeah. always brought a big bank with us, and basically went for there, so... <laughs> the two's what they get, me and him what they get, and Boxer yeah, yeah, Scott, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I've not been up there since this fight, and I think he's been the same, so there are two coaches doing. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I'm sure you'll be uh, you'll be back working together pretty soon, anyway. But right. I mean, it's, uh, the Scottish boxing thing, anyway. When you do get like a derby, or when mm. you do get two two domestic fights coming together, right. there's there's little like it actually. The, the interest right. that it generates. <clears throat> I mean, like McGregor Farouk pretty recently. Right, you go back in history, right. like Buchanan yeah. and Watt mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of thing. But right. so and, and you know, Arthur boxed. You, you know, he had his, his rivalries as Aye. well, didn't he? But mm -hmm. so it, it will, you'll get a lot of attention, a lot of eyeballs well, on it. I, th I think it should be a sell it. I do think Bray yeah. will sell it. But uh, Ricky wants to three miles for me. He's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> walking distance for where, yeah. for where I live. Yeah. And this is, I know it's going to be a hard fight, but that's why I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting the others in to, mm. to get up to as fit as I can possibly be at this age. I know I'm not going to kid them to honestly, it's going to be the fittest I've ever been the best because it's not about you. I'm going to yeah. be as fit as I can possibly be at this age and 
And you get to orient him, basically. <laughs> and between it as well, you, you're saying he's only down the road. He's Coatbridge, isn't he? Right. And, and again, before the boxing, you were, you were a top footballer, weren't you? I mean, was that semi-pro or pro I, at the time? I wasn't a top football player for more. I played with Albion Rovers. I was pro. I played yeah, professional yeah. with Albion Rovers. Yeah. So I was at the, 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 the Coat Bridge. So mm. they were Ricky, 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 Ricky Burnsland. But I loved Albion Rovers. So as I played for him for a, for a, a season, then <laughs> I was just about to stab in the leg in a fight one night at and I couldn't play. So I went back to boxing. Right, so that's what led you down the path and everything for a reason and all that business. I don't know if it's been a, a blessing or a hindrance, I don't know yet. <laughs> I was, you know, when you were saying then, you mentioned the amateurs and you mentioned Willie working with Boxing Scotland yeah. and Ricky working with Boxing Scotland. I think there's got to be a shout out me to, not just to your man over there, young Drew, uh, but the Scottish amateurs set up at the, well, for a, for a good I while know. when you look at the Commonwealth Games, they were mm. the most successful nation. Successful, They're it? absolutely flying, aren't they? They're, um, and I think now we're going to see next year, we're going to see a few Scottish representatives in the Olympics. Obviously, I get HGB and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, but yeah, mm -hmm. no idea. They're doing well. There's a lot of, if I'm honest, it's a bit like a conveyor belt. There. There's a, yeah. This has been, right, there was a time, we, actually, we, boxed, we boxed England years ago, and in our yeah. team, there was Scott Harrison, Alex Arthur, myself, yeah. Craig Dockery, Lawrence Murphy, Gerard wow. Murphy. Yeah. This was, this pool went deep so did yeah. uh, Ricky was just he was the cut year earlier and he was in that, that that certain squad but that was the best squad I've ever seen now yeah. for, Scotland, for yeah. Scottish boxing and I'd say the one with my boy Drew uh, Leo Church and other real boys coming through yeah. I would say this is probably could surpass that kind of yeah. that kind of yeah, talent because mm. in Scotland it's split in half there was a federation and an association yes. and absolutely I, I was our club went with the federation which meant I couldn't enter the big tournaments yeah, and I ended up getting bored with it and I ended up going to football that was, that yeah. was the reason yeah. I kind of I kind of I chucked boxing kind of thing but the Scottish boxing you know, it's like I can be a bit of talent and it's and they're doing quite well yeah well on the football I mean what was your position I'm going to guess full back Fall back, <laughs> no chance. Say I'm mid. Poof. <laughs> I played midfield and up front, so I did. So I, I could find anywhere. That's actually yeah. why they players. I can keep. I can. I can take a corner with both feet. I could. Yeah. I was no bad at that, so I could play left mid, right mid, centre mid. But I bet you didn't yeah. play full back, didn't you? No, I didn't play full back. Never. Never. Oh. Never played full back in my life. Come on, you. <laughs> Right, you played full back, didn't you? I did play yeah, full yeah, back, yeah, which yeah. probably says a lot about my footballing right, skills. Right. Yeah. 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 On, on that though, we, we're going to use that as your kind of specialist Hi. subject. We like to do a little feature Hi. on uh, away from boxing. Can't be anything to do with boxing, mm -hmm. but obviously football's your thing mm -hmm. um, away from that. So, and I know because you told me Partick Thistle is your club. Um, so there's no Celtic Rangers business going on in, in, uh, in the Lemon household. You're, you're Partick people, is that right? That's correct. Jake and Drew, they had season tickets. They, they were the two wee guys that used to wait for the, the players to come out and get their autographs, Class. travel everywhere. So I wasn't as. I wasn't as uh, I was looking for a business committee to party mm. first with them, but I used to go up every other week with my dad and wear on my belt. So I was out in the I was out in the park with my British and my Commonwealth belts and that. So I've always been my granddad supported them. We just all go brainwashed, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I've always supported them since then. And because of the stuff in Glasgow, it's always kind of, it gets a special attention, I think, party, because right. it won't have anything to do with the sectarian thing, and it's, it's, no. it's kind of, it's just not permitted, any of that business. You've, you've got three teams in Glasgow, yeah, you've got yeah. Celtic Rangers and Party for yeah. and, and where that, where that live in your family, it's either Celtic or Rangers, mm. but... Obviously, there's a few, it's, there's no areas, it's party Thistle fans, there's a couple other guys that was party Thistle mm. fans, but ah, it's a kind of, you got me a laugh, I suppose, in a way, yeah. well, you're a Thistle fan, but it was yeah. a kind of tongue in I don't mean that in a bad way, Thistle, yeah. as I say, they're, they're, they're my team, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a couple of questions for you. Now, yeah, but one or two might be a bit tricky, but I think you'll get a couple of them, but what, the one thing that stands out if, if you're looking at party is that one of the best quotes ever came out of the party dressing room. Yeah. Uh, it was a manager, uh, John Lambie. Johnny Lambie, Johnny yeah. Lambie's yelling and at Dalmit. And he's credited with, with um, basically giving one of the best quotes when one of his players was in the dressing room and he'd been, he'd been cracked on the head. Yeah. The, the, his number two, uh, was it Jerry Collins? Is that Jerry right? Collins, yeah. aye. So Jerry he says Collins. to him, he says, uh, McGlashan's is all over the place. This, he's concussed, doesn't know where he is. <laughs> what did he say? Tell me his pearly and send him back out. <laughs> so, tell me his pearly and send him back out. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. Tell me his pearly and send him back out. <laughs> Which is a belter. So uh, there Brilliant. is that. There is that. Did you know, by the way, and I didn't know this until very recently, who owned Partick Thistle 1986 to 1989? 
very famous chairman from much further south than here. Ken Bates. No way. Was Chelsea that? chairman. Was yeah. it I? Yeah. Jeez. Didn't know yeah. that, you know, didn't know that. Didn't, didn't know it's Chelsea at all. Well, yeah, it must have I remember, but first, what, first were going down, they were, they, were, they were bankrupt, and it was Save, Save the Jags campaign. Yeah. And I was yeah. working with Glasgow City Council at the time. I'm a joiner. I was working with Glasgow City Council. I remember we used to go up to Fur Hall and remember the Save the Jags campaign and yeah. collection boxes and that kind of thing. But that was, that was about a good 20 odd year ago. All right. yeah. Are you aware of, uh, I'm just, uh, the, lads, the lads will know what they're over there now, but... Yeah. The, the mascot has had a lot of attention as well. Yeah, yeah. do you know about this? What is it, mate? Yeah, wait. Help me out. Simpsons or something. Let's see it. I'll show you. I'll show you. Kingsley. Kings. Oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> no, I didn't know this. I was going to... Which, apparently, the fellow that, that, that designed Simpson? this mascot said it's Lisa Simpson yeah, on meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a show, it's pretty accurate. To well, I, I know, yeah. it's actually, a, apparently it's meant to represent a fan and all the angst and anger and yeah. emotion you, you get and from being a fan. Sort of you get a for you get a for It's become an absolute cult phenomenon, that. Right, I that, that mascot, that. I yeah. knew that mascot. Did you do that, I, I knew the other yeah. I knew the lads, had, yeah, they knew that, but that's, uh, that's mm. another particular little bit. And um, I think I've got one, but, oh yeah. Which, which famous American actor is apparently a Partick fan after doing Panto in Glasgow in 2015? Oh, what's his name? Very, uh, again, another <laughs> cult hero, another really? kind of cult. If you think of um, uh, some of the programmes he's been in. In fact, that, that, uh, that Daniel Helmsley could have been in Baywatch. No, um, he's not really. Who is it? The Hoff. The Hoff? The Hoff. Oh, the Hoff. The Hoff. <laughs> He's a Thistle fan. That's yes. a lot of I didn't do that. that. I didn't do that. What I didn't was he doing either. in Pantomime? What was he doing in Pantomime? Hey? What was he doing in Pantomime? I, did, I, don't, I never knew that. I never knew that. I'm not sure he could name the first 11, but he is apparently a, a, a Thistle, thistle fan. fan. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Brilliant. You know the way these things go. But, um, the Hoff, what a guy. Yeah. The reason why I was accusing you of being a fullback, Willie, as well, is we've got a fullback question. Uh, and there's a, a fullback who won a couple of Scotland caps. This is the last one I'll, I'll, I'll try and stick mm -hmm. on you now. Um, had a very famous older brother that started off at Partick as well, but he was a good fullback himself, won a couple of hundred appearances and two Scotland caps. Can you think of that? It'd be before your time, it's just famous family, famous brother that started at Partick mm -hmm. before going on to do very big things this way, down this way. No, I don't know if I feel back. Yeah, his brother wasn't, his brother was a centre back. One of Scotland's best. But golf? Nah. Slightly before him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a bit before him. So you don't fall back. I remember it for old Bobby Lawn. That was that was yeah. back in the day. So <laughs> no, he's, he's Liverpool, Scotland, legend, match of the day. Yeah. I can't fucking forget my leave at bike. You help me out. Well, he's the biggest pundit in the country for a long, long time. Uh, recently, kind of stopped doing the punditry on Match of the Day. Hansen? Yeah. Alan yeah, Hansen? So that's right, yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I remember that. Yeah. Too. You're right, sorry. Yeah. I've got a fucking brain freeze hey, at Alan Hansen, that's right, aye. Yeah, well, there you are. Big Hansen, aye. Big Alan Hansen. Alan Hansen, so it was brother John, who was a thistle, one, cl one club man. Is it Alan Hansen, you'll never win out with kids? Have I made yeah. that yeah. up? It was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Aye, that's right. You're right, I forgot about that. So that, that's that's the only knowledge I have on Partick now, and that was for your benefit. I've, I've not been. I'll be honest. I've I've not I've not been I've not been up at for home in years. Neither have I've not been there for. I think the last time I was there was just long after I won the British title. I was up with the belts, and I went for a few med games after. But I've just kind of I feel right away. I feel right away for everything kind of thing. But uh, but as he says, the boys they mm. keep me kind of up to date. Yeah. But cheers. Yeah. You know, up to date here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's the what's the, the the plan then for the lads? Well, we're just doing, but what I want to do is we're doing, mm. we're just doing, say, uh, yeah. Auntie's gym. Jake was sparring the, I was doing last week, sparring with James Moorcroft, and to be fair, I was a mile, I'll be honest, but I was a mile half at Jake sparred the day. Good on the job mm. learning for Jake, yeah. that was good. Yeah. Jake, James is, James is like boys' class, yeah. and it's good for Jake to get a look at things at a different gym, different atmospheres, yeah. just for experience. And Drew, as you say, his season's finished with, we box in Scotland, but I'd say just come down and we can mess about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, it's Jake's fighting. Jake's fighting on the same ball as, as me and Ricky Bunn. Yep. So Five runs in again. Nothing. Well, do you know what? You've probably definitely broken a record now. It's probably never happened twice anyway, has it? Yeah. I think so. so. I, don't think, I don't think it's happened twice, but yeah. I do know 
the ham to yeah. the season before. Haskins, yeah. Lee Haskins and his boy, and then me and Jake done it in, in Scotland. But I think Lee Haskins was the first date in Britain, mm. and me and Jake's yeah. first date in Scotland. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you down, Willie. Really. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Because you know you've got a busy day, you've got other things to do, but appreciate it. And thanks very much, good man. Good right, man. Right, Thank right, you very right, much. Right, and listen, right, all, the, all yeah. the best with the Burns fight. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. Cheers. Great to catch up with Willie, your old pal. But we're uh, going to wrap things up after this little break. Oh, what a man, Willie Lemond. So man, yeah. No, um, like I said, I, I genuinely mean this. He, and I've said it a few times, but uh, one of the very best people I've met in boxing. Yeah, and it was good watching his two lads train today as well, Drew and Jake. Yeah, talented um, family. They are. Yeah, Jake started off professional ranks mm. very well, and uh, Drew, Drew's a very, very exciting prospect. Um, he, I think, both boys would say he's. He's the most talented in that family, for sure. In a very talented family, but no, he had a, a great fighting family. Well, we wish him all the best in that battle with Ricky Burns. But, um, you know, we're at the, the, the final bit now here of yep. the Boxing Review Show, Anthony, so we kind of wrap things up a bit. What we need to know of you is what's really caught your eye. You've been at your own uh, show on Saturday night. You've been yep. across all the boxing. You've been here, there and everywhere. So who's the hero of the week for Anthony Million Dollar Crawler? Hero of the week? Hmm. That can be anything you this want it to be. You know this. It can be a ring no. walk. It can be a, a special card, you know a fight. It can I be anything. I don't know whether. Well, I can break it down. Ring walk of the week. It's Alicia Baumgard. No, that's an easy wow, one, really. She wasn't owns it, it doesn't yeah. she? She just, yeah. she just rocks it, doesn't she? You know, when you're dancing like that all the way in, I mean, would you be worried about yeah. your legs or, you know, am I expending She's too much energy it, here? She? She's not I, bothered, but. I am. Um, I've probably never had that problem because I dance like an in between so mm. I never have that problem. But yeah, no, nah, she has a big power. Well, that was always a criticism with Naz, wasn't it? Like, where obviously it was a split, but yeah. some energy and some thought used to go into those ring walks. Yeah, um, and it was very, very good, but I think Clarissa's still ahead with the dance routine yeah. that she did. Yeah, that, with was, the Savannah that was unbelievable Marshall fight. that yeah. night. Yeah, that, that was, was unbelievable good. that night. But yeah, so Hero, do you know what? I mentioned it earlier. She obviously, she absolutely wasn't the hero for what she'd done. But do you know what I did like to say? So she made a few heroes. I mean, the way female boxers got together after what Danielle Helmsley done. Mm. She called that's the name, isn't it? That's what she done. Like the, the stick and the, the way women boxing got together. Like, you know, we worked so hard for this. And I think that's been a message loud and clear. It's, mm. just, it's not gone down well whatsoever. And... It was just, I don't know, it just, it brought together a bit of a, I don't know, solid, solid, I was the right a word. Sisterhood. A bit of Yeah, a bit of sisterhood, and I, I really rated that, so um, it, it's created a hero in a different way. Yeah. That, can you have that? You can have what you want, I just said, okay, it's yeah. whatever's, whatever's so caught your eye. Knockout so. of the week, young Jake Dodd, yeah. uh, professional debut against um, a tough man, he's Dean Maguire, old Ram right, it was, um, it was a peach of a shot, so yeah, I'd probably go with that being the knockout of the week. Steve Maguire gives it a go as well, doesn't he? He does, he gives it a go, and uh, yeah. you know, he's a good, he's a good um, fighter in the opposite corner, you know, in the away corner, but yeah, it was, um, it was a great um, debut from Jake Dodd, yeah. and he'd probably have, <laughs> he'd have um, a cause for a ring walk of the week, because I think it was about a five minute ring walk. <laughs> Milk in the moment. Yeah, fair play, yeah, and he yeah. did, he deserved it. Well, you did give that advice to your brother Will when he made his debut recently I did, as well. You said you take yeah, your time, enjoy it. Debut. You know, make sure that you yeah. you don't you don't run. You know, he was coming out to crazy crazy nights by Kiss, yeah. wasn't he? But you said yeah. you know just make sure you at Wait least get for to the to chorus kick in yeah. and then start walking. No, I say that to any you know, a ring walks a huge part, and if mm. I never mind your professional debut. So you know, it's all show it, it? Own it, enjoy it, and um, yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. Next week, we're going to be reviewing the action, obviously, for the weekend coming up. Now, Lee McGregor is back in action. Yes, good he's to see him He's had a frustrating time, hasn't he? But he's in against yeah. Eric Ayala, and that's up at the Madder Bank, which has had some big, big yes. nights, hasn't it? We had a bit of a Scottish the, the theme with Willie Alex this Arthur, week. Yeah, yeah, some of the yeah. What a great fighter Alex was, yeah. Um, some of the great nights he had there at the yeah. Middle Bank. So that's, yeah, that's this weekend, isn't it? That's Friday, and then... Who else we got on that cut? Jazza, is Jazza on that cut? Jazza is in Dubai, I believe, against oh, Hector Sosa. Okay, right, yes. So that's, that's is, another one that we're going to have. A, a, but, but there is one that stands above all else at the weekend, and it's in Shawnee, Oklahoma, 
which is not the easiest journey in the world. And it is, of course, Maxi Hughes from yep. Doncaster traveling over there to fight George Cambosis. And hopefully shock the world. Yeah, and Sean O'Hagan who hates flying. He's had to he's had to get uh, more than one flight. So I, you know, obviously he's coach, he Max's coach, Josh Warrington's dad. Sean. You, you can't you can't get to Shawnee, Oklahoma directly. So I'm sure uh, I they've bet had a bit he's of a journey. Enjoyed those travels. Yeah. I, bet, I bet being company to him would have been, well, would be on it. But yeah, on those flights would be um, you could have made him. I don't know why. I just get <laughs> just get Carl Pilkin and buy his Sean. He'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Well, there's no smoking on that plane either, is it? He's not calming his nerves with a no. fag. So yeah, dude. but I'm looking forward to that. And listen, yeah. I think Maxi Hughes is a very live underdog. And I know people, listen, it's a big task ahead, mm. but Cambosis, like obviously he's coming off your last three fights. He's Tiafimo Lopez, Devin Haney twice. And I'm not saying or suggesting, you know, Maxi Hughes is at that level, but mm. when he gets into a rhythm, Maxi, he's a hard man to beat and he's a hard man to get out of that rhythm. If Maxi can get, if he can start well, I genuinely believe he's in the chance of pulling it off. And it just shows you as well, I know we've said it before, but you know, what's a defeat or two or five in his case? There you go. What does it matter? He's took it he, he's like just he taken on challenges. When yeah. He lost getting stopped in a British title fight. He cracked on, didn't he? And, and he's stuck yeah. with it and he's he's an inspiration to so many fighters who yeah. you know, who lost earlier on in the career, in the middle of the career, to you know, not to give up and he's you know, I mean he's carried on now, he's had these great nights and his greatest night of the week could be of his career. Sorry, could be this yeah. weekend on Saturday. Yeah, old Danny Hughes, that's his real name. But of course, he boxes yeah. with his granddad's name, Maxi, who's a, a big inspiration for him yeah. as well. I don't think he could be Danny Hughes at the bomb box at, track the, at time the time. Well, yeah, because there was, whatever. A, was an heavyweight uh, yeah, at the time. That's right. So uh, Maxi Hughes, anyway, wish him all the best, and uh, yeah, we look forward to reviewing that one. But what else is I on for you in the week? This week, I might might be going Edinburgh to watch. United this week, uh, Manchester United in the pre-season. That's obviously, mm. can't can't miss that. Might be. Uh, what else? What, what, what night is that? Is it Wednesday? I think it's an afternoon, actually. Wednesday? The, is it an afternoon? It's tea the time. Hibs game? I'm sure it's not. I'm sure we're not playing a French team. This shows how much I'm like. You see, it's I not, am it, not going. I am not going for a drink with the lads if that's what yeah, you're trying to do. Yeah, I can, I can sure see that. I can playing. sense that. Um, yeah, we see it's, it's just yeah. pre-season nonsense at the minute. It hasn't all yeah, kicked in. There's nothing getting excited about anything yet. Those games no. are an absolute nonsense. So you are just going on the beer if you go. It's as simple as that. Okay, you know. you've rumbled me. But yeah. And the new keeper might be there. Yeah. Will it be too soon? I would have thought. His, I don't want yeah. to miss his debut. <laughs> it won't be happening. Anyway, that is uh, that's it. And so yeah. episode six is at an end. It and is. Uh, yeah, Willie Lim, star of the show. Um, but there you go. Some great well, stories. Just yeah. The usual: click, link, subscribe, comment. Let us know what we can improve. Yeah, on. all the comments as well. Yeah, yeah, they're all taken on board. Yeah, yeah. So any anything negative, Anthony particularly likes them, uh, or positive or anything like that. But uh, yeah, like, subscribe, Spotify, all the rest yeah. of it, YouTube, the whole thing. That's the boxing review show, and that's episode six.